A dog is about to say goodbye to its owner, but then sees something strange in a hospital room and manages to stop the doctor and turn things around. Adam collapsed against the rough bark of the oak. His lungs burned and his vision was shaky. Brewster whimpered anxiously. The dog pawed at Adam's arm but got no response. Panic surged through him. He smelled sweat and something else, metallic and wrong. His mind flashed back to another incident like this, a warehouse, deafening gunshots, the heavy thud of his first handler hitting the floor. There was no time. He nosed Adam and tugged the unresponsive owner towards the crumbling fence at the back of their New Hampshire property. He urged Adam forward. Beyond the fence lay the old logging road. There might be someone there, someone to help. Each drag felt like pulling a boulder, but he didn't stop. Adam groaned, but his eyes remained closed. Brewster strained harder. Another bark brought a flicker of awareness back to Adam. His world was a blur of pain. The pounding in his head was relentless. Brewster's insistent barking cut through the fog. Faces peered down. One was familiar. A panicked neighbor had found him. Then came the wall of sirens. An ambulance. Then darkness closed in again. Brewster rode in the back of the ambulance. At the hospital, chaos swirled around Adam's gurney. Doctors shouted orders and nurses scurried with high-pitched voices. Familiar scents of disinfectant and sickness filled the air. Voices were saying that it was probably too late to save the man. He'd suffered a stroke and had been unconscious for several minutes. Brewster knew he had to stay close to Adam. Nurses tried to shoo him out of the treatment room, but his low, rumbling growl made them hesitate. This wasn't just a stubborn dog. There was a wildness in his eyes that they daren't ignore. Brewster slunk under the bed as they worked on Adam. His senses were on high alert. IVs were inserted and machines beeped a strange, discordant rhythm. Adam was wheeled away for tests. Brewster surged forward in a desperate attempt to follow. A security guard blocked his path, but with a flash of teeth and a powerful surge, the dog broke free. His nose tracked Adam's scent through the sterile hallways. Then he saw it, a closed door surrounded by people. Adam was inside. He pushed past startled nurses. Inside were more unfamiliar faces, a new doctor and the scent of complex machinery. With a desperate leap, he placed his powerful paws on the door handle and pushed with all his might. The door swung inward with a loud creak. Brewster hurtled inside. He ignored the shocked gasps and kept his gaze locked on Adam, who lay still as death on the table. The room was a whirlwind of activity when Brewster crashed the party. There was a flurry of white coats and the sharp smell of antiseptic. The constant beeping of machines was confusing. Brewster felt his hackles rise. The hair along his spine bristled. Someone grabbed his collar and he whirled. A snarl echoed in the sterile environment. The security guard lunged again. But Brewster was too quick. He dodged the grasp and, with his tail tucked, he weaved around a gurney. Desperation drove him. Brewster's nose twitched as he left the room. He picked up the faintest trace of that same metallic, tainted smell that clung to Adam. It led him past closed doors and rooms filled with unfamiliar equipment. Finally, he skidded to a halt in front of a heavy metal door. His sense of smell powerfully urged him on now. He scratched at the door. His whining turned into frantic barks. Why wouldn't they understand? Adam needed to get in there, now. The commotion drew curious onlookers. Nurses peered out from surrounding rooms. Doctors paused their conversations. Even the security guard chasing Brewster stopped in surprise. The dog's insistence wasn't that of a stubborn pet. It was laced with a primal urgency none of them could dismiss. A young doctor crouched down next to Brewster. What's got you so riled up, buddy? She asked. Brewster whined. He leaned his weight against the unyielding door. Someone had to listen. The doctor glanced at the restricted sign. Then back at the desperate dog, something flickered in her eyes, a spark of curiosity mixed with uncertainty. Might as well, she muttered more to herself than to anyone else. She keyed in a security code and cautiously pulled the heavy door open a crack. The familiar scent hit Brewster like a wave. It was stronger here, almost overwhelming. 
he pushed his way through the opening and ignored the startled gasps. The room beyond was familiar, filled with specialized equipment, but the scent, it clung to the machines and the vials of liquid. It was an unmistakable echo from a past he couldn't fully recall. A senior doctor entered the room, looking irritated and bewildered. Brewster stood his ground. His tail was tucked low and his eyes were locked on the bank of machines. It was here. The answer was here. Dr. Harris, the young doctor said. There was an urgency in her voice that caught the older man's attention. I think, well, the dog seems to think this equipment is relevant to the patient. The senior doctor scoffed. He told her this was a restricted area with highly specialized gear. But then he paused. His eyes widened slightly. Then he said with more urgency, wait, the patient brought in with a suspended stroke. I couldn't place the odd blood work results. Certain markers don't fit any standard diagnosis. He strode towards the machinery Brewster had fixated on and studied the readouts with a rapidly growing astonishment. Extraordinary, he breathed. This is configured for an extremely rare autoimmune condition. There's less than a dozen cases nationwide. A hush fell over the room. Everyone stared at Brewster. The dog tilted his head, waiting. The strange, sterile smells and the hum of unfamiliar equipment weren't just a source of anxiety anymore. They were a trigger, a key unlocking a door to something in his past. Images flooded his canine mind. A dark warehouse, the sharp staccato of gunfire, the acrid smell of cordite, the blood-soaked concrete. Then his first handler, Mike, crumpled on the floor, his eyes wide with pain and confusion. Brewster whined frantically. He felt useless beside the body of his partner, the one he was supposed to protect. He had a strong sense of the paramedics that day, their movements so similar to the doctors now attending to Adam. There was the same sort of urgency of blood and fear tainting the air. Mike had been rushed to this very hospital. Those machines were hooked to his still form and Brewster, the ever loyal canine, strained against the hold of the officers, desperate to reach his handler. He was driven by that same primal instinct that pulsed through him now. Just like with Adam, he had known, sensed the right place, even when humans were blind to the path. Less than an hour later, the risky treatment began. IV lines snaked into Adam's arms and the machines whirled into action. The doctors were now aware of how precarious his condition actually was and how unlikely their discovery had been. Brewster collapsed beside his bed. He was exhausted. In his canine heart, he knew what the doctors couldn't. The scent of this room was that of healing, of second chances. Mike had been given one years back. Now, it was Adam's turn. Hours blurred into an eternity. Occasionally, a doctor would check Adam's vitals. Over a few hours, their frowns eased. The specialized treatment seemed to be working. Adam finally stirred. A weak moan escaped his lips. Brewster lifted his head and thumped his tail weakly on the floor. The doctors rushed over and a surge of excitement crackled in the air. Adam's eyes fluttered open. He was disoriented but undeniably alive. The doctor's relief was palpable, but it was mixed with a deep confusion. How had the dog possibly known what Adam needed? The diagnosis was so rare that most doctors wouldn't even consider it. They reviewed security footage and tracked Brewster's journey through the hospital. His frenzied dash through the restricted wing was captured in grainy black and white. Nurses recalled his near feral growls when they tried to intervene. The security guard shook his head when he recalled his fruitless chase. Then, they all watched the bewildering moment the dog had led a team of doctors to a treatment protocol none of them would have dreamed of using. The footage was passed from staff member to staff member. Eventually, it reached the desk of Dr. Matthews, a senior physician with decades of experience. As he watched the dog's unwavering pursuit of the specialized treatment room, recognition sparked in his eyes. Cindy, he called to a passing nurse. Do you remember a few years back, an injured canine officer? 
severe internal bleeding, rare autoimmune reaction to a gunshot wound? We fought like heck to save him. Cindy paused and racked her brain. Then her eyes widened. She remembered. It was an Officer Thompson, she recalled. And she remembered his dog, too, a large German Shepherd. Then she frowned and said that the patient's name was not Thompson. But the officer retrieved treatment in that very same restricted suite, Dr. Matthews murmured, more to himself than to Cindy. The protocols are nearly identical. He grabbed his laptop and headed towards Adam's room. The puzzle pieces started to click in his mind. Brewster was lying protectively next to his bed. He lifted his head at the doctor's approach. His eyes were no longer filled with desperate panic. They held a wary intelligence. Hello, Brewster, Dr. Matthews said quietly. He squatted down to be closer to the dog's level. Do you remember me? I took care of your handler a few years back. That memory is how you knew to save your owner today. Am I right? Dr. Matthews searched for an old file on his computer. And when he found it, he discovered a truth that turned the hospital's confusion into a shocked understanding. Days after his collapse, Adam woke up with a terrible headache. He shifted slightly against a warm presence at his side. Brewster? The dog lifted his head and his tail thumped hesitantly against the linoleum. Slowly, bits and pieces began to filter back. Adam remembered the collapse in the clearing, the gnawing pain, and then nothingness. He tried to sit up. Brewster immediately whined and nuzzled his hand. News of his remarkable actions during Adam's ordeal reached him in bits and pieces. Nurses whispered with wide eyes. Even the security guard who'd initially tried to wrangle the dog shared the incredible tale. Adam was profoundly moved, but he was also deeply perplexed. How had Brewster known? And more importantly, how had he known where to find help? Dr. Matthews offered the missing link. A couple of years ago, I treated your dog's handler, Mike, for a very similar condition to yours. It stemmed from an autoimmune reaction after a traumatic injury. Dr. Matthews paused to allow the information to sink in. Adam's eyes filled with tears. He was starting to grasp the improbable connection. Brewster was with Mike when he was brought in, the doctor said. They were inseparable partners. During Mike's treatment, Brewster likely picked up on the unique sense of the specialized equipment and medication we used. The same equipment and medication that ultimately saved your life. A wave of astonishment washed over Adam. All these years, Brewster had carried the memory of that harrowing ordeal, of the machines and the environment that had brought Mike back from the brink. And when faced with another crisis, those deeply ingrained scent memories had guided his actions. It had led him to seek the same life-saving resources for Adam. Dr. Matthews leaned forward. There was a newfound intensity in his eyes. Adam, am I right to assume that Mike was your father? Adam nodded amidst tears. He told the doctor there was a small clearing just beyond the old logging road. There was a headstone in the middle of it, and he went there to remember the bravest man he'd ever known. Mike and Adam's mother had split up when he was still a child, and since she'd remarried soon after, Adam had taken his stepfather's surname. But he loved his father dearly, and his passing a few years earlier had left a huge hole in his heart. Brewster had become his dog after his death, and they had been inseparable since. However, he'd never imagined that one day the dog would literally save his life, just like he'd done with his father when he was still in the force. My dad was a hero, Adam whispered. For a long time, I was afraid we were too different to be father and son, but apparently, it turns out I inherited a gene mutation from him, and Brewster must have known somehow. In the hushed silence of the hospital room, Adam finally allowed himself to fully process the extraordinary journey they'd been through. Gratitude, a profound sense of awe, and the bittersweet ache of loss washed over him. Those emotions were entwined with an unbreakable thread of love and loyalty for the incredible canine at his side. Brewster, the retired canine, the stubborn dog, no one but Adam, 
truly understood. What a shocking twist. Do you have a story about a remarkable dog saving its owner's life? Tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now though, we're done. Catch you in the next video.